Welcome back, all of you, to the next day session on Fusion Procurement Implementation. Fine. This is a totally a practical uh, training. And then uh, my name is Nana. And then uh, you can reach me at nana.app60 at uh, gmail.com. And then uh, one of them has uh, told me that what happens, uh, they're having an issue on uh, what happens, one of the functionalities work, not working. He told me his name is Varadaraju. Fine. He has not joined, actually. I told him that as soon as you make a payment, what happens, I will even help you out uh, on your, as I will now help. I, I'm used to help uh, people. Uh, and then uh, uh, sort of the problem. There may be some silly mistakes, uh, and the and the test instance he has got issues now. Fine, something is not working for him. Uh, I normally help all my students whomsoever is going to the field. Also fine. Uh, uh, so two three viewers have made a mistake because what happens is a huge one. They cannot remember it. So that happens basically. I'm waiting for him. He is not a join actually. Fine. Okay, doesn't matter. Fine. No see <clears throat> any joins. It's okay. Fine. So now let me go on and share my screen now. Fine. Starting. <clears throat> And then here, what happens, all the paid participants have been uh, provided one lab prefixes now. Fine. Let us say, I am not going to work on enter now. I'm going to work on enter. And then each and everybody will be, whenever I create any entity on enter, you will be creating on your number. Fine. Go there. <clears throat> I will be creating on the number. So in this practice session, what happens, I will be using N101 now. Fine. Because from tomorrow onwards, we are going to set up the entire system. Today, it is just a P2P life cycle for which what happens, I will now use N101. So Naveen, you will now use N141. And then what happens, uh, Venkata, uh, Venkata Jagadish will be using N161, etc, etc. So you can now see your uh, prefixes. Uh, you might have all received, all the paid participants would have received the prefixes now. Right? So they have to use the prefixes and then attach one to everything. So that what happens, when you do the real setups, then from tomorrow onwards, what happens, you will be on your own prefixes only. And I will again repeat, whenever I create anything on N10, what happens, uh, Siva will now make N1101, N Siva will be making it on one on N171. Uh, one. Is there any doubt on this now? Whenever any entity is created in the system, what happens? You'll be doing it on your number. Please do not use others' numbers. Uh, in the previous batch, what happens? It was a big clash. People were not following the discipline. Say, sir, already my supplier is created, my item is created, I don't know who has created it now. Fine. Please do not touch others' numbers now. Fine. So, N10 is my wife. Don't touch it. Fine. <laughs> like, wait, what happens? You have to work upon. Please don't touch others' numbers. You by heart your number and then what happens? Whenever I do anything on N10, you have to do on your numbers. And for this today's session, what happens? I'm now using N101 because what happens? It's only just a demo. And then uh, tomorrow onwards, what happens? We'll be completely creating the structure. Fine, right from scratch, we're going to create it now. So other time, what happens? We'll be doing it now. Fine. I'll now today I'll now do a what is called a yeah, uh, what is called a yeah, login <clears throat> and then I'll do a P2P demo now. And then whenever you have any doubts, you please ask me then and there. So that what happens? I'll now clarify it also. So I will not use enter. And then yesterday I have given you what happens. All the paid participants have given a username and passwords also along with the credentials. So with that, what happens? We are going to begin our activity now. My uh, speed is always fast. And then uh, whenever you are not understanding it, what happens? You just uh, again ask. And then what happens? Whatever you are not understanding it, you again ask me. I will not clarify it now. So I have given you instance. And then what happens? You can go up to calm only on the second time now. On the first time, what happens? The first, entire URL has to be pasted over there. When you're doing it for the first time, what happens? The entire URL has to be pasted. So the paid participants can only do it. No, fine. Uh, others cannot use it. Fine. Go enter. <coughs> so unpaid participants can only watch. And then uh, whenever you feel that it's okay, you can write to me. And then I will now send all the credentials to you. Fine. So I have given you one username. Fine. It is KMP, K50 underscore EMP1. Everybody will be logging in with this only. Fine. We'll be logging in with this one. Fine. Go there. So the password also I have given you in mail. Fine, go there and then have a look at it. Now. Fine, so KVT underscore MP1. So everybody will be logging in on this one. Fine, with this one only. Inside, what happens? We are going to create a test data on my number of N10 with the N101 as such. Now, let me first create an item now. So we are going to create an item now. Fine, go there. So let us know for it. All of you do the practices also on each and every day. You complete the practices. Otherwise, if you accumulate, what happens? It will be getting accumulated like anything. And then uh, people will be uh, not be having any time at all. So that, that sort of a thing will happen now. So try to practice each and everything on the next day. Fine? No, no day is uh, up to uh, no, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. You cannot do it now. So as soon as you wake up or in the evening hours, try to make the practices. On this. So I will now click on the home icon on this one. Fine, there's a home icon there. Click on it now. And then there, what happens? You'll be having one menu called the product management. You click on the product management and there is a sub menu called product information management. And then again, when you're running the video, take notes now because what happens? You cannot remember things. That is the biggest thing because you're not doing it for the first time and then you cannot remember everything. If you can take a notes, that will become very handy when you go into the implementation side. So that will be very handy. So go there. Menu and then sub menus, product information management. I click on it now. 
So once when you click on what happens, one more screen opens up now. <laughs> in this, what happens, you can see on the right hand side, your task carousal now. Fine. This is a list of tasks. Fine. Click on the task carousal on the right hand side and click on it. And then there, what happens, you click on the create item. I'm going to create an item now. Click on create item. <clears throat> And then I'm uh, the organization which you have to put is K500. This is a master arc. Fine. It is an existing structure. So we are going to use it. Everybody has to use the same master arc. Master arc. Fine. The master arc is going to be common for everybody because now we are only seeing a demo. Later on, you will have every entity of yours now. Fine. In the training, you will be creating each and every entity of yours now. Fine. For the demo, it is only this thing. And go there. Go. And then go populate it. And then the number is K500. Item class is root item class. ROOT. You put it now. Fine. This is from a PIM perspective. We'll be explaining it a bit later on. Fine. You and then populate this one. ROOT, you write it. It will be coming over here now. And go there. And then here, you drop down. You bring it down. There's a template ready made later. That is called K50 purchase item template. You will be creating your own template in the real when, when the real things come to what happens, you'll be getting it. Fine. Select it and then click on bring it to the right hand side on this one. So it comes over here. Click on OK by which the template gets applied. In EBIS, what happens? We write the name and the description and afterwards we populate the template now. Fine. So it's slightly different now. Fine. Go there. So in EBS, whenever you go to create an item, whatever we go there, go to items, go to master items. And then you will choose the child org now. Fine. The child org is the M1. The child's master opens up now. Fine. There, here, directly the master has to be put. The child's master of M1 is V1. V1 is opening up. And again, those who don't know EBS, what happens? They don't worry about it. Fine. People have written to me, sir, we are very, very confusing EBS. Uh, don't worry about it. Fine. Uh, you are not uh, going to work on EBS, you are going to work on the infusion now. So the comparison parts, you can just leave it as a channel. You put the item name and then put the item description. And then afterwards, you go there, go to the tools and then go to copy from. From where, what happens, you're going to apply the template. So here, it's slightly ulta ulta. Fine. First, you apply the template and then afterwards, create the item. Fine, go there. <clears throat> go there, click on OK. So by which, what happens, the template gets applied. So the template is applied. Here, what happens, there is no giving you a warning. We'll be coming to it a bit later now. Fine. You can ignore the warning as of now. Fine. Click on this. We'll now ignore the warning as such now. I will now address the warning later on now. <clears throat> Go there. Item. So, it is N101. Fine. <clears throat> Siva, what is your number? My, this thing is N101 item. N171. N171 underscore item one. Siva's uh -huh. item number is N171 item one. Fine clearance. Everybody is or clear on this now. Fine. Whenever I create anything on N101, you have to identify your numbers now. Fine. Siva's number is N171 underscore item one. Fine. Similarly, what happens? I will again show you this one. Uh, Nana, sorry, sorry to stop you. I have one question. You tell me. So in Abyss, uh, when we query for the, um, you know, some names, uh, let's say you given the uh, item class as root something, right? I we use percentage uh, to query for that. Of course, uh, we'll be coming to it. We'll be coming to it. Fine. Uh, we are not uh, started the real training actually. We are only having a demo session. Fine. How to query a record? All those things will be seeing it. Okay. Fine. So okay. here in this session, what happens? You simply follow whatever I do. Fine. It is just to have a look and feel of your PDP demo. Actually, fine. You just do okay. what every you can always disturb me at any point whenever you're having any doubt. Fine, it doesn't matter. Fine, go there, put the item name and uh, uh, description, and then afterwards, what happens? You go there, you click on the specification area. <clears throat> you click on the specification area. In EBIS, we have 16 tab regions as far as item is concerned. Fine. You now give a purchased item template, you now go there. Once you give it now, and go there. So <clears throat> I will now put purchased item template. And then click on done now. So the template gets applied. So the moment it, the template gets applied, what happens? You go to the inventory. The item defining attribute of inventory is on. The status attributes of stockable and transactable is on in inventory. If you go to the purchasing, you can now see the purchased and purchasable is on. If you go to the order management, what happens? You can now see everything is on. Similarly, as soon as I apply this template, here also what happens? Everything is automatically set. And then we have 16 tab regions. They have been clubbed and then reduced to seven now. These 16 has been reduced to seven now. If I go there, and then I click on the specifications, and then you can see what happens with all these seven now. So, for example, if you go to the manufacturing area, if you click on the manufacturing, I'm already in the manufacturing. So, here, what happened? The bomb is there, the BIP is there, the costing is there. So, so many things have been clubbed together. The process manufacturing. So, like there, what happens? So many attributes are being clubbed. Here, what happens? The bomb is separate. The bomb is a separate tab region. The BIP is a separate tab region. Fine. BIP is a separate tab region. And then the costing is a separate tab region. Fine. So, all of them are clubbed together. Fine. The process manufacturing, you can also see BIP is there. And then the costing is there. The bomb is there. So, everything clubbed together is in manufacturing. So, whatever is relevant to manufacturing, they have clubbed together and then kept it in one go. Fine. They made a lot of R&D on this. And then what happens? They made uh, the things more simple as far as the fusion is concerned. So, if anybody has got any doubts at any point in time, please tell me. Fine. I will now go to the purchasing tab region. Now, fine. Click on the purchasing. And then let me give a list price now. <clears throat> Click on the purchasing. So, I will now make a change to what? Three now. Fine. Go there. I'm going to make a change to three now. Fine. The list price. This will now default onto your requisitions and purchase orders. 
right? It will not default on your requests and purchase orders and go there. They're not done. Now, in eBiz, what happens after you fill up everything, you save it, and then afterwards only you can assign it to the all. tools. Organization assignment can be done. Here, what happens? We can even assign it before saving and go there. We are going to go to the associations, and then let me assign it to a child. Now. Click on associations, and then we are going to associate the child. Again, I'm telling you, those who don't know eBiz, exactly follow. Please run my video, take notes, and then exactly follow whatever I do. Fine. In the last batch, some two, three uh, girls were freshers. Actually, they have completed every exercise. Now they are ready for placement. And then now, uh, what happens? Uh, uh, with that knowledge, when they started to speak, they were all uh, very happy. The, uh, the what happens? Employers will be very happy. So please do exactly whatever I do uh, on the next 25 days. So what happens? You won't be missing anything at all. That, my uh, what happens? My uh, thing is so totally practical. Only thing is on my number, you have to do on your number. I go to the associations and then I click on the actions and then here what happens? I go and click on select an ad. And click on select an ad. Fine, click on select an ad. And then action select an ad. And then I'm going to choose the child org. Fine. All of you will go to the same child org because we are now working on existing structure. And then I will not dish you enter 501. Remember, we create our items in the master of what I'm not K. So sorry, not J. It's K. Sorry. It is a K501. K501. So all of you will be assigning to the same org. Fine. Select from the left hand side and then click on apply and then click on done. K501. You will be creating on 500 and then you will assign it to 501. That is common for everybody. But internally, item numbers are different. Go there. Now you can see there is no coming. This completes item creation now. Fine. There is no assigned. Created and assigned. Now we can give a save and close now. Any doubts? Good. So you go there. I will not drop it down and then go on save and close. Now. Drop it down. I can save or save and close. Save and close item is now created. Now let me. Oh, now what happens? Uh, Nana, can we uh, make a segments of the items as well, or uh, one second, like we did? One second, one second. Let us know. It's not throwing an error because what happens? I'm not given the what is called uh, the proper one on the what happens this one. So uh, I made a change here afterwards. What happens? I'll now make it change. I'll make it primary actually. So the unit submitted is now made primary. The other problem. So when you're doing applying template, please what happens? The tracking unit submitters make it as a primary. I was uh, modified the template as a primary and secondary. Please modify to primary. And then what happens? You go and then give a save now. I click on save and close now. I give a save and close now. Oh, give a save. Anna, can you help me? Yeah, tell me. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. One second. Yeah. Uh, in EBS, we can create uh, segments of uh, an item. Can we do it? Yeah, in, yeah. Uh, here, here, item is uh, no more a key flex field at all. Fine. Item is no more a key flex field. Fine. So there, you cannot create multiple segments of this much. Uh, one second. I have to modify this template here. Fine. Because what the second thing. Now uh, I will again do it. Fine. There is a uh, mistake. I have done. Fine. One second. Cancel it. So let me again go on and do it. Now. Fine. Uh, you, how you have to do? I'll tell you again. Fine. There is a one R and D has been made. And then <laughs> okay. Click on create item. Uh, I will not cancel it. I will not click on it. You cannot do any. What happens? Uh, no further segment is only a single segment. Actually, fine. I will not say n one zero one underscore item one. Then go there. And then. Uh, uh, sorry, the organization is K five zero zero. That is the master org. I'm putting it over here now. I go there. And then item class is root item class. Root item class. You put it now. And then afterwards you apply template now. I go there. Apply the template and then bring it over here now. And then click on OK. And then as soon as you come to the main screen, what you do is you accept the warning message. You'll be seeing about it warning message while you're doing it now. And go there. In this place, what happens? You make a change now itself. Now. Tracking unit submitters make a change to primary now. Afterwards, you start to fill up. Fine. So first, make a change of the tracking unit submitters to primary. Fine. That is a mistake, which or rather an R and D has been made, and then what happened? The template has been modified actually. Fine. Go there. Go to the specifications area, and then you go to the purchasing. Fine. Go there. Go to the purchasing. You make a change to primary, and then afterwards, what happens? You go there. Go to the purchasing, and then give a list price. Make a change. Let's say whatever you want. You can make a change now. Fine. Go there. So click on it, and then now what happens? You go there. Go to the associations, and then associate to the R. Fine. Click on the associations. <clears throat> and then here, go to actions, and then go to what? Select an ad. So, action select an ad is not coming mainly because what happens? I have not given the item name and description. That's why select an ad is not coming. So, let me give the item name and description. Find n101 underscore item one, and then give a tab. So, I will not say Nana's <clears throat> demo item, and go there. Now, what happens? You'll be getting uh, the actions in the question. Select an ad will be coming now. Then go there. <clears throat> go to actions. No certain ad is coming. I click on it, and then I will now select the child or fine. This K five zero one, and then click on apply, and then click on done now. Now, after having done this, what happens? You know, what you drop it down, and then click on save and close now. So by which the item is now created. We need out some item creation. Fine. First, modify the primary and secondary tracking to primary, and then afterwards do it. Now we'll be having a look at those things later on. Fine. 
So item is created. Now we'll now go on and create a purchase requisition. I'll go there. So click on this home icon. We'll now go on and create a purchase requisition. <coughs> So we are going to get a purchase requisition of my home account. And then the bottom will be having a menu called procurement in which we'll be having a sub menu called the requisitions now purchase requisition. You click on it now and we'll now land up on the requisition area. Now let us now go on and create a requisition for this. <clears throat> I click on it. So there is a requisition line entry is there. Fine. You click on this requisition line entry. This is now fully set and so what happens is we have to set up everything from scratch that will be taught to you in the training now. Okay, like N101. I will now, I will now write up to this. What happens you will now have to see this now. Fine. N101. Item is N101, isn't it? I made it as such now. N101. And click on search now. Many people are making an RNA, then they have modified so many things actually. I don't know. I'll now see this now. Fine. N, I will now make a search now. The item is N now. See, N171. His item is coming. My, or is my item is not coming. I don't know why it's so. Uh, actually, it yeah, looks like you didn't assign that item to Chail Larg. It was. Okay, okay, fine. We'll now see whether they, we'll now, I've done it like that. We'll now see this now. Fine. I'll now go and make a query, query on it now. I think I have added it. I'm not sure about it. Or you can change the default template value. Yeah, one second, one second. Now the template is okay because the OER... what, what about assigning it to the master log? No, master log is created. It has now been created in the master log. I go there. You go to the product management, and then I go to the product information management. Let us see whether I have assigned it or not. I go there. Product information management. Let me go to the. We had to query the item. So querying an item has to be done via browse items. Now, I click on the task carousel, and then do not go via manage items, but we had to go via browse items and then query it now. So let me query this item. I go there in this place. I will now put EN101 and then click on search now. Now, see it's available. Fine, it is not assigned. Somebody has told fine. I'll know what happens. I know images I can hide. You can even upload an image also. I go there, hide and then let me open up the item and then let me assign it to the child log. I might have forgotten it. I go there. N101 item one has not been assigned actually. I go to the order called you go to the it's called you go to the uh, associations and then I might not have saved it or I don't know what exactly that. I go there, select an app. <coughs> I might have forgotten it and go there. It's K501 and then enter in fine. The organizations must be same actually. Fine, what is K501? You didn't search actually, directly applied. Okay, okay, maybe ah, I didn't search it. Who is this? Who? Ashok. Ashok. Oh, Ashok, fantastic, beautiful. See, Ashok has identified that without searching it as I have applied. That may be a real mistake. Fine. Whenever I make a mistake, beautiful Ashok, fine. So without searching it, I have applied. That is what he is saying. So I might have made that mistake. Basically, fine. Go there. Click on select it. And then left hand side, you have to select and then click on apply and then click on done. Now, fine. Good, good, good observation. Fine. Good there. Fine. Go there. Now it is now both the organizations are coming. So I might have made this mistake. Fine. Go there. Click on. So learn from others' mistakes actually. Fine. What is it? Is not done. Fine. Go there. And now what happens? We go there. Go to the home icon and then click on the purchasing. <clears throat> Because I was speaking, not very what happens. I have forgotten the flow actually. Fine, somewhere <laughs> when I was answering some questions, I might have made some mistake. Fine, click on the purchase requisition now. Let us go there and then try to query your item now. Purchase requisition, procurement, and then purchase requisition, and then I'm going to query the item now. So click on the requisition line entry, and then here we will be creating the requisitions now. Fine, go there. Yen 101, it has to come now. Item is coming. Vandichi, we got it. And put it on there, and then I will now say the unit price is coming as three. Then what happens? The requester is now modifying the price. You now want hundred quantities. Now and say uh, we want the purchase officers to buy it at two dollars. And go there. He is now putting a two dollars okay. and two dollars is now coming. So for hundred quantities, what happens? I will now click on the add to requisition field. I click on add to requisition field by which what happens? This hundred quantities will be coming on the right hand side. Click on edit and submit. And click on edit and submit. <clears throat> and then here, what happens? The approval mechanism is excellent when compared to eBay. There are six ways of approval. I will now click on manage approvals and then see who is there to approve it now. If I click on manage approvals. I want to have an auto approval actually. I want to have an auto approval because many people are setting it up. Approvals is common across legal entities and so what happens whenever you set up the approvals, it will be common for everybody actually. So 1022, I will now see who is going to approve now. I will now make it as auto approval actually. I will now make a change to auto approval. It's not doing it now actually. I click on back because people are modifying it actually. Once again, let me see who has modified what now. <clears throat> people modify things. Uh, I told them that not to make a lot of R&D. <clears throat> 
I will now go to one of the tasks. Now, I will now go to the setup and maintenance. In the setup and maintenance, I have one task. Go there. Let's manage task percentage. See why enough percentage on task configuration. Somebody might have changed it. I think probably go there and see. Now, there is a task name. Manage task configuration for procurement. I will now go to the procurement task. <coughs> Somebody may be modifying this now, or it is setting up something else now. So I'm now going to a BPM work list here. Fine, go there. And this place, you go down. I will now choose the requisition approval. And requisition approval for which I will now see whether anything is modified or not. Nothing is modified yet. Okay, fine. It's okay. And now what happens is this is not the place. So somebody might have modified the approvals basically. And I will now put the thing up to calm. I can put it on another tab region. I will now see the approvals basically. I click on it now. And then I will now go to the setup and maintenance. And then I will now run the task called manage requisition approvals. If I manage requisition approvals. So just note down these steps. If your approval is not going, you can hold there and go to that. Manage requisition, manage requisition approvals. Rec percentage, APP percentage entering now. So manage requisition approvals, I'm going over there now. So here, I will now see uh, what has happened now. <clears throat> uh, this is enabled now. If I go there and then now edit the rules now. This is this particular combination of stage participant is enabled now. Let me click on edit rules. I will now see what is there in this now. Go there. There is one rule. Rule always applies is there. I will now go on and have a look at it. Now fine. I will now make a change of this. Now fine. Let me, you know, this one. So it is now going to somebody else actually. Fine. Let me make a change. Fine. Click on the edit now. Fine. Actions edit. And then I will now make it as automatic now. Make a change to automatic now. I will now make it as automatic approval. Fine. Click on OK now. So this action has been changed to automatic. Fine. On this one, whichever is enabled now. Fine. Go there. Uh, so click on save and close by which what happens? I modified the approvals to automatic actually. Now I go there, go to the shop requisition, click on save, and then click on manage requisition manage approvals. 1022 is the requisition number. It has to show me the application developer has to approve. The person who is developing it has to approve it now. It takes some time to effect now. Fine, go there. So after having made this, what happens? We had to deploy it also. Fine, we had to click on deploy. So we had to make a change of this. I, I think I have deployed it now. I have forgotten to do that. I think inside I have forgotten to do the deployment. I have made a change of this. I have not deployed it actually. And let me deploy it now. So let me make a change. A concurrent program will be running for deployment actually. Every rule, whenever it is changed, what happens? It has to be deployed actually. So I am now running a concurrent program in the back end now. So the rule gets deployed over here now. And even to take it effective, what happens? It will take some more time actually. Fine. The rule, the changes were deployed. Fine. The result is coming. So here again, go there. So click on save once again, and then afterwards click on the manage approvals. It has to show me that this person, the application developer, has to approve it now. So the application developer has to approve. So it has to give me a list of approvers. Fine. Here, the approval is basically a list building mechanism. It will now build the list of approvals when compared to EBIS. What happens is that you do one fine. You can now see this now fine. So to apply, uh, to uh, obtain this application developer, please run my video. And then on the configure, on the requisition approvals, fine. Manage requisition approval is a task that you go and then modify exactly. You will not get it. Fine. So if somebody has modified it, you can try this now fine. Because people keep on modifying it because everybody is working on it. There's a common instance, more than 10 batch students are working. And then the approval mechanism is across uh, what happens early now. Right? So somebody would have modified it. So any doubts on how to modify it? Or do you want me to show it again? Is it clear? Good. You are clear upon it. I will now submit for it. 1022 will be submitted for approval. So the requisition is now approved. Now I will know in EBIS what happens there? We have one thing called auto create area. I go there. We can now see this now in this previous what happens we have an auto create area. So from where we you now pick up the auto create pool area is a pool of approved requisitions now. An auto create area is a pool of approved requisitions. We go there, and then there, what happens? We clear first of all everything. There is a buyer there, there is a ship to find clear it, and then what happens? You make a query now. Click on, click on find. So 1022 is a requisition. 
which you are going to Karina, fine. So the pool of approved requisition from there, what happens? You convert the requisition into purchase orders now. So you, you also have a similar functionality in Fusion now. So we'll now go to the auto grade area and then do it now. Fine, go there. So here, first of all, you'll now see the requisition whether it's approved or not. Fine, there's no pending approval. If you click on the hyperlink on the bottom, here what happens? It will not show you normally. There's a hyperlink on this now. Fine, click on it now. And then you can now see the requisition coming up over here now. And here it is approved now. So as long as it is pending approved, what happens? You can see this now. Otherwise, what happens? It's not approved. You go to actions and then go to view document history. It is a view action history in EBS now. Actions, view document history. We can very well see what has happened to the requisition. It was submitted for approval. Let's get all the dogs. Now, what happens? I will now go to the what's called uh, uh, my uh, purchasing area and then go to the auto grid area. Any doubts till now? Practice each and everything, whatever I'm doing now, fine. You go to the manager requisition approvals and then change it to automatic. Fine. Whichever rule is enabled inside, what happens? You make a change of the action to automatic so that what happens? You will now be immediately be up and running on this one. We will be seeing, of course, every method of approvals basically once when you set up this structure from scratch actually. Click on done now. Now I will now go to the purchasing fine. I, by the side of the purchase requisition, we'll be having purchase retail. I click on the purchasing icon and then there, what happens? I'm going to do it now. Fine. Go there. Click on this. In the top, what happens in the task carousel? If you see, you'll be having a process requisition which is there. Fine. Click on the process requisition. That is called auto grid area. The process requisition and the purchasing area task carousel is called the uh, auto, auto grid area. There you remove this buyer name, remove this buyer name, and then put the requisition number and then query it now. It already come over here in the bottom. Otherwise, what happens? You go to it and click on search. It will be showing you. Now, I'm going to create a purchase order for this. And I'm querying it now. So afterwards, what happens? You go and then select it from the left-hand side. Now. And go there. You keep your cursor on the left-hand side. The line gets selected. The line gets selected. And go there. Click on Add to Document Builder. Click on Add to Document Builder. <clears throat> Click on Add to Document Builder. You'll be adding it to the Document Builder. Now. So here also, what happens? You go there. And then you select it and then what happens? You click on automatic or something like that. So if you go for a manual process, you have to manually build it to the automatic build. If you go to the manual, what happens? We have to select a line and then do it now. Fine. So you know, select it and then click on automatic now. Once you click on automatic, what happens? It will be basically creating this is a document builder now. Fine. The document builder in which you'll now pop into the supplier on site and then click on create, by which what happens? It will now go inside now. and then make a purchase order actually. And all that. So the same way, what happens? You go there. I have now added the document builder. So in this case, what happens? We cannot populate uh, supplier inside. Also, we can very well populate here. What happens? You can put the supplier as what K50. Fine, K50 sub one. You can put it now. Not the con consigned supplier, but the normal supplier. Put the normal supplier. The supplier inside is coming. Fine, go there. And then with which, what happens? Click on OK. Fine. Uh, the source agreement and all we'll now see on the automatic documentation. Fine. Put the supplier inside over here on the document builder. On the document builder, there also what happens? We have put it and then afterwards only what happens? It is not coming. We have put the supply and it is coming automatically because what happens? It has already been programmed like that. Here also we can do the same thing. Fine, go there. And then afterwards what happens? We come there, click on OK now. <clears throat> In this place, we will now give OK now. I click on OK, by which what happens? We will now create a purchase order now. The purchase order is now getting created now. It has now come to the document builder on the right hand side now. Once when you give OK, it will all be coming. So here you go down and then click on the create. Purchase order icon. Fine. We had to click on the phrase on the document builder on the floor on the street. What happens? You had to say okay after populating the supplier on site. Here, what happens? You go there and then click on create by which what happens? They're now creating a purchase order. The purchase order is now getting created. There also what happens? The purchase order is created. And then here, what happens? We don't have any mechanism for checking actually. If you made a mistake, then what happens? The approval will now give a problem. For example, the quantity is 19 here. I go to the shipments and then here, what happens? I'm going to make a change of the quantity to 18 now. In the in the EVIS, what happens when I make a change of the quantity to 18? Let us say 18, and then give us a commit. Now, when you up, submit for approval, it will now say error. Now, fine, click on approval. At the time only, what happens? It will now give error. Now. That what happens? The line quantity and ship on quantity do not match. This sort of error is coming. So that is 19. Is 18? Fine. There's a mismatch. Hey, come on, correct it. So in EVIS, in Fusion, what happens? We have a mechanism to check it now. Fine, go there. So once when the PO is created, now the 2022 is created. What happens? We can validate the PO. Now. Fine, go to actions and then go to click on validate. The validate will now check whether the PO is in order in every respect or not. Fine, actions validate is available in Fusion now. So by which, what happens? We can very well validate the PO whether everything is okay or not. And then we'll now see the approvals now. No errors are warning the phone. Fine, click on okay. And then click on manage approvals. Then I have asked not to touch this now. Find the purchase orders. Uh, we'll now see whether anybody has touched it or not. Click on manage approvals. It has to show me the application developer as approver now. The person who is creating this uh, purchase order is known as an application developer. So you have to get this now. Fine. Otherwise, what happens? Uh, note down, we have to go to the task called manage document approvals for purchase orders. 
for requisition is manager requisition approvals there you have to go on the make it automatic here you have to go to manage document approvals and then whichever is selected you go and then change the action to automatic fine the similar fashion you are doing fine click on submit so i nana i nana has sort of interrupt you uh, uh please can you show me where uh, where did you to change the task uh, okay. uh position <laughs> approval because you see i'll forget otherwise okay okay fine i will not show please, you again so sorry to disturb you but no no problem no problem anyway any anybody has got doubts it doesn't matter when we are doing it again and again only thing is the number of sessions will extend it doesn't matter as long as it you are clear order is okay fine i will not again to you both the requisition approvals as well as purchase order approvals how to make a change i will not show you fine so it has to come like this no application developer it has to come otherwise you make a change it doesn't matter i have already told all the students that whenever they set it what happens somebody will not change actually final orders so 20122 is now submitted for approval click on okay and here what happens we can now go to go to this navigation and then click on manage orders now click on this and then go to manage orders and then let me query the 2022 now when click on 2022 find go there order number is 2022 2022 and then give it up and then click on search now i am going to make a search now and then you can now see what happens it now pending approval if you click on the hyperlink below the status what happens it will now say how much of progress it has happened now and click on the hyperlink on the status what happens you know see see application developer has approved the task completed is yet to come now fine it is on the process actually fine the application developer has already approved sometimes only it will not show otherwise what happens it will go to approved you will not have a hyperlink at all fine so application developer has approved the task completed icon is yet to come fine click on done now and then again what happens you go there and then if you go and then make a research click on this and then i will now make a research what happens again search on it what happens it will be having a open status now <clears throat> It will be having open status. So if it is open, what happens is already approved. Fine, we cannot see the status now. Fine. So since uh, Mahadeva asked for this now, fine, let me go on and show it to you. Where to do the what is called requisition approval setups change? I'll now show you. Fine. You, when you done it, you click on your name, and then you go to the setup and maintenance. Fine. Go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> go to click your name, setup and maintenance, and go there. I will now say manage percentage, rec percentage, EPP percentage. Fine. Enter in now. And then this is the one. Manage rec up. Fine. It is manage requisition approval is the task name. Fine. You click on the task name. Fine. Manage requisition approvals. Fine. Go there. Now only one of them is enabled. Fine. Sometimes in reality, what happens? Whatever they are configuring, everything will be enabled. Fine. In the real situation, what happens? Whatever you are configuring, everything is enabled. So since the test system, what happens? Everybody they might have disabled something and then they have gone something else. By whichever is enabled, you keep your cursor and then click on edit rules. And then in reality, what happens? All the rules will be enabled. Fine. Not that only one rule is enabled. Fine. Every rule, whatever is written, will be enabled. Fine. Here, there is only one rule available here. Against the rule, what happens? You keep your cursor there. In this place, you keep your cursor, and then what happens? You go down in the bottom. What happens? You, the action. You, if it is not automatic approved, you click on edit, and then make a change to automatic approved. Fine. Make a change to automatic approved, and then afterwards, what happens? You have to deploy it. Now, fine. You save it and then deploy it. Then it will be affected. Similarly, for the Purchase document approvals. I will tell you the no, task name. Fine, go there. Try, try. When you try it, then only what happens? You will understand everything. Fine, go there. I will not say manage percentage, doc percentage, EPP percentage. Fine. It is manage document approval is for the purchase orders now. It is manage manage doc approval. Fine. Click on the hyperlink. Fine, go there. And then whichever is selected again, same way. What happens? You have to go and then edit and then see this now. Got it? Clear. Now we will now go and then receive it. Now, fine. One more thing I have to do. I will now make a change of this order to what happens? A three-way receipt. Now, fine. With a what's called my standard delivery. Fine. I'm going to make it. Uh, so, if I click on the hyperlink, what happens? Uh, the document can be only be viewed now. Fine. Two zero two two. We can only view it now. Fine. And then I click on the hyperlink. We can only view the document. We cannot edit the document. If I click on the hyperlink below it, what happens? It will now go into your view status. Now, fine. Go there. It is now going to go into the view status. And you can view it now, fine. and you can see the requisition reference number also one zero two to requisition number number is coming. Fine, go there. I am not going to edit it now. I am going to make a change of the receipt routing as well as what happens. I will now make it make it as a three way receipt now. Fine, go there. So to do this, what happens? I have to bring the document into edit mode. You go to actions and then go to edit now. I am going to make a change of the edit. Fine, click on actions edit. Now what happens? A change order will be created now. So a change order means what? It is equivalent to revision of EBS now. It is equivalent to revision of EBS. Fine, click on yes now. Fine, which order? They are accepting it now. Fine, go there. Ashok is excellent. Fine, he is able to observe things very clearly. Fine, again, Mahadev is also very good. Fine, his questions are really very good. Fine, likewise, what happens? They try to develop a friendship, and then the chat message. You can even make a personal chat with them, and then what happens? You develop it. That is an art actually. Developing a friendship is an art. So you do it, and then what happens? They will be very helpful to you when you go into the field for uh, what happens? Any implementation. Yesterday I got a call from one of them. He got stuck in one of the problems. Fine. I had to examine his setups actually. Find some mistakes. Some there. Fine. Go there. I will not say what happens. I will not say change of receipt routing. 
So in EBIS, we cannot give a description at all whenever you're making a revision. Fine, here is no, here is no possible. So when you take a report on a particular change order, it will not say why you have made the change order. This facility is not available in EBIS. Fine, go there. So I will not change it. Fine, go there. I will not go to the schedules. There, EBIS is known as what? Lines, shipments, and distribution. Here it is lines, schedules, and distribution. Fine, click on lines, schedules, and distribution. Hey, Krishna, have you joined? You are having a confusion on the timings actually. Krishna, are you there? He was having a confusion on the timing. Fine. Uh, uh, as I told him, it's a 3.30 p.m. GMT. <clears throat> I don't know whether he has joined or not. I'm not sure about it. And select it now. I go there. Select it. And then here, what happens? I go and then edit now. I go to the schedules and then I select the line from the left-hand side. It has to be in a blue-gray color. I click on the edit icon over there. Now, fine. I'm going to edit and I'm going to make a change as a result routing now. <clears throat> Tirakaran, yes, tell me. Yeah, tell me. There is no need to, what happens when you do do on the, what's called a chat, uh, uh, sometimes I'm not able to see the talk. Huh? Oh God, Tinakar is not able to see my screen. What about the others? Are you able to see my screen now? Anybody? Yes, we can see your screen. Tinakar, you are unable to see my screen. Uh, can you open up your mic and then speak? What exactly is your problem? Or does somebody may even help you out now, basically? Yeah, Nana, I could not see the screen. It's got oh. blanked out. It has got blanked out. Yeah, it's not to delete the, all your cookies actually. Fine, <clears throat> I will not today in the one. I will now send you one file for uh, deleting the cookies. Now, fine, along with the file also. Fine, well, I will not yeah, try. He but, was he able to see prior to this, so it got suddenly. Oh God, there must be some problem in your mission basically, fine, because others are able to see, and so what happens? There is all a, right. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Whenever you have any problem, anybody can you know, open up, openly discuss. So then, what happens? There's no need to put any private chat. Uh, it doesn't matter because it's all a training is a class. Fine. We have to learn and so what happens. Yeah, sure. It doesn't matter. Anybody can open up and then somebody will help you out because like what happens, I was making a mistake. Ashok has correctly pointed out, you see, beautifully identified. So any mistakes, mistakes are basically common for anybody. Because I'm speaking and then doing it. Sometimes I make a mistake basically. I don't go gone to this place. I have opened up and then I'm going to make a change of the result protein to standard now. The direct result protein, I will not make this a standard now. Standard. And then here, what happens, I know it's already a three-way result. Fine, okay. <clears throat> three ways I'm making it up and go there and then I will now click on okay fine this is this is what I wanted but it is already there now fine it is now defaulting from some other place where exactly it is defaulting everything will be explained in the real training actually the result routing has been made a standard zip and go there click on okay by which what happens this is now changed and then let me submit for approval now fine, click on submit and then since already we have what happens this thing the change order one will be submitted for approval fine click on submit now so 2022 the change order one is now getting submitted for approval now <clears throat> And then we have already seen that it is a, there is a, is an automatic approval because no, no, just, uh, just one quick question. Uh, sorry, uh, you know, in, in business suite, uh, you have a uh, purchasing set up purchasing receiving options, yeah? exactly, exactly. Yes. And you, you generally set up uh, yes. the receiving options, yes, over yes. options per, per org, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Here also, we have the same thing, everything will be set up now, fine. But well, you're but doing here, the time training, what happens? I see, up everything. Uh, I see that uh, it's, it's per per uh, per. Per document here, uh, when you scroll down, yeah. uh, you can see the receiving options. When you clicked on 2022, you oh, can see. Once again, I yeah, if you come down, you can see that it's it's uh, showing per oh, per document, isn't it? All the receiving options. Once again, come down, yeah. Go to the uh, go to the yeah. I'm in the view mode now. Fine, doesn't matter. I'm going to the view mode now. I'm in the view mode. Yeah. What happens? I'll now go there and then what happens? I'll now click on the. You have to TA, to see this. What happens? You have to click on the details icon. Fine. You should yeah. not go to the edit icon. Only in the edit one, whatever they'll be having the edit icon now in the view mode. Fine, go there and then click on the details icon on the last now. We cannot see this now. Now it will not be visible for it. Now. You are saying something else here now. This place. Yeah, I was wondering if this is uh, edit, uh, if 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 uh, one can yeah. edit this. Yeah. Is this yeah. uh, uh, editable? I mean, if this can can this be changed? Yeah, like, yeah. At this yeah, point, can, this is what it was initially it was a direct inspection. I have made a change to standard actually. It but then, uh, but then, how does it? So, the, is is it? Uh, can this be changed per per document, per line, yes. per per distribution? Yeah, 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 yeah. Per document, per line, everything can be changed. Fine, you can change. But the, so, the, is that the so that's a difference between e business and and a fusion, isn't it? Because in, in fusion, it, it's an e business. It's always going to be per per org, isn't it? You see, the per per is a good observation by Mahade. Fine. What he's saying is that here if you say you can have any number of lines and then go to the shipments and then the receiving controls are common for all the lines fantastic beautiful observation beautiful fine but here what happens it is on a line basis actually fine. i have not even seen this now fine maybe uh, whether you set up on one line everything will be changed or not i'm not sure but it is on a line level uh, thing now. Fine. good 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 observation 
uh, the receiving controls are common in uh, for there is a document level excellent mahadev fine good beautiful uh, uh, we will make a check of it later on no? fine once when you go to the purchase orders all the r and d's will not make it no? fine we, we right. can we see whether uh, the first line can be direct second line can be what is called as the same uh, standard receipt direct everything we will not make it no? good good but, but keep in mind when you are doing the purchase orders at the time what happens you will not make a check of it good, good, good. right okay thank you uh, nana one question here Tell as me. we are in the approval process in ebs we have three types right like a position and a job you know, employee supervisor and ame exactly what is the hierarchy do we have here yeah in ebs what happens we have a position hierarchy we have a, what's called a, a supervisor Super hierarchy and then we have a ame right well, there are three types here there are six types of approvals there are six methods of approval there in ebs we have only three methods one is a position hierarchy one is a supervisor hierarchy and then one is a, a, what's called a ame here there are six methods of approval it is available this more popular here. Okay, got it. Fine. Now we are going to go and then make a result. Now, fine. It's a standard result. Fine. Go there. So that you go through, uh, Nana. You go through. Uh, you will go through these all six uh, uh, type of varieties. All in six. In right from scratch, we are going to see now. Fine. Not only this six now. Right from the creation of a legal entity, chart of accounts, values, fine business okay. units, inventory logs, purchasing setups. Everything will be done one by one, and then it will be done now. Fine. Go there. So I'll now show you. Since okay. you asked this question, what happens? We'll be going via this one. Uh, Create all the procurement worksheet now. Fine. I will now go there and I'll show it you. Fine. Procurement worksheet. Fine. Go there. I will now show it you. Go to this C colon. Then I have already sent you one uh, document of 750 MB. Those who are paid, they would have got it now. Fine. The fusion procurement training document. It's a 750 MB uh, document. I already sent it now. There, if you go there, you can now see this. What is the procurement worksheet now? Fine. The procurement worksheet. We will be doing each and everything. Can you look at the agenda? Agenda is exactly reflected over here now. Fine. Everybody would have got an agenda. So that way we will be working upon. <clears throat> we will now create a complete structure. Everybody will be working on their own structure. It is basically an implementation training. Actually, fine. Everybody will be working on it. So I will now write from the I will now create a location. I will now create the legal jurisdiction, then legal authority, legal address, legal entity, and then afterwards, what happens? We will now go to the chart of accounts. Now, find value sets, values calendars. I will now create everything, and then afterwards, we will now deploy it, and then create the financial steps, and then afterwards, we will now go. Ledger is completed. Then afterwards, what happens? We will now go there, and then complete it, and then I will now create the business units, and then afterwards, we will now create the inventory logs. we will now go to the hrms and then the jobs position departments everything and then assign the roles and then afterwards only we will now jump into the purchasing setups and after you do all the setups what happens we will now perform the transactions everything will be fully explained in the training now fine don't worry it's a complete end to end training so you will be becoming fully ready on this now fine as soon as we complete everything now. so the training will be a very a very uh, in depth and then uh, my training on procurement alone is for 25 sessions you can imagine about how much of depth i am going to cover it on this now fine. for it and another question uh, for example if you are implementing for a new, new company yeah uh, now they already on a legacy system for yes. example trading yes how do we convert those existing purchase orders or items yes in yes yes, yes. we will be seeing that also this is called data migration data. how we are going to migrate the existing legacy data into fusion we will be seeing this in the training i will definitely see awesome it. awesome good. great yeah yeah we'll do it who is this uh, srinivas nana srinivas okay fine good srinivas good fine hey srinivas you are from us na Uh, yeah, 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 no, no. Yeah. From the West Coast or East Coast? I am from Atlanta, East Coast. Atlanta, okay, fine. I am now sitting in Cincinnati, actually. Uh, okay, fine. I am in Dallas, Dallas. Fine. We are now like taking care of a granddaughter, actually. My cellphone is here. Good, good, good. Oh, call them. Yeah, fine. So this guy has got a good question. Now, fine. We'll be seeing those things also. Any other questions you have? <clears throat> okay, good. Now we'll now go on and receive the item. Now, two zero one two. We are going to make receive. Fine. Click on the home icon and then let us now receive it. we will not go up to 1015 today because what happens i want to complete this cycle now fine 1015 will not go <coughs> it's now 955 will not go up to 1015 here what happens you go to the warehouse operations you click on the warehouse operations and then let us go there go to the receipts now so this is the menu the sub menu is receipts now warehouse operations and then click on the receipts you go there and then we are going to receive 2022 now go there here we have to give the organization remember it is k501 for all now Right. The master org is K five zero zero, and then the child org is K five zero one, and then click on OK now. Fine. By which you give it, it will be coming on the right hand side now. For this exercise, for this demo, all of them will be having a common master org and common child org. So here, after having given this org, the org will be coming. If the wrong org is coming, click on the change organization, then change it to K five zero one. You click on the task carousel, and then click on the receive expected shipments, and then what is the purchase order number? Anybody is remembering it? Tell me. Two zero double two. 2022 is 100% correct fantastic all of you are having a good memory fine give a tab now 
it will be coming. And then here, what happens is sometimes if you give a due date, which is more than three days, what happens is make it as a blank and then make a query. If I click on search now, you're going to see this now. If I click on search and then you select it. And then out of 100, what happens is let me receive only 15 now. If I go there, select, select the line, click on receive now. I'm going to receive now. If I click on receive. I'm going to make a receipt. I'm not going to make a gate receipt now. If you click on the show receipt quantity, it will not show how much is expected from supplier. We are expecting 100. So make a change to 15 now. Make a change to 15. I give it up. And then here, what happens? Since it is going to be in the receiving gate area, what happens? Sub inventory cannot be given. Now. Sub inventory, you cannot give it now. I go there. You cannot give it. Only when you deliver it to the inventory, we can give the sub inventory. If I click on create receipt, so by which what happens? The receipt gets created now. If I click on the a GR and number will be coming. On the next stage, what happens? You'll not give the shipment number as 123. Fine. And then number of packing slips is five. <coughs> and then go to the packing slip is four, five, six. And then give the bill of lighting number. Fine. All these things you give it. So it will be a big value addition now. Fine. And then when you take a report on a particular GR and number, it will not give you all these details. So depending upon the company to company, somebody will more like to for what happens, uh, populate each and everything, others will not. So depending upon the company's practices, what happens, uh, we have to tell the client that everything is possible to take it via report. Now, if I click on submit now, so by which what happens, the GRN number gets created. You can now see 1021 is the GRN number for 2022. And then 1012 is the corresponding requisition number. I click on OK, the GRN number is created. Now what happens, we go there and then we'll now observe in the inventory. Right? We'll now go to the next tab region. We'll go there, open up. One more tab region, I'm opening it up. You can open any number of tab regions simultaneously. Like opening, opening multiple forms in EBS. So here, what happens, I click on this and then I go to warehouse operations. I click on the warehouse operations and then I go to the inventory area. So previously, what happens, I've gone to the receipts area I now go to the inventory area. So click on the inventory area. Here, what happens, I'm going to see the item quantities now. Here itself, what happens, you go there. N101 underscore item one. You put your item. It is my wife. Don't touch it. I go there. And then put a tick mark everywhere now. Put a tick mark and then click on search. It will not show you how much has been expected on this. Now. Fine, go there. Click on search. It will not show you on this. No, fine. It's no say. It is now inbound. 85 is expected from the supplier. In the receiving section, we have 15. And then on hand is nothing. And then here we have one extra facility that against the inbound. How many POs correspond to the inbound is now shown in Fusion. It is not possible in EBS at all. If you click on the inbound details, fine. Click on it now. Go there. And then here what happens in Australia. Hey, Mahadev, try to attend each and every day session. Yeah, I'm really loving to see you in the session, actually. Fine. He, he's actually, it is a work time, basically. Fine. He's now dodging his uh, boss, and then uh, he's now sitting on uh, some canteen, and then he's now watching this. Now, fine. <laughs> try to do this on every day. Fine. I would like to have you on every day, lively. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, <laughs> I've been finding it a bit difficult, but I've managed to switch between my laptop and my phone. So, Exactly, yeah. Fine. Try Thank to you so much. Right. I'll try the best. Yeah. Everybody who are knowledgeable or present, what happens, will be having some excellent questions and answers, basically. Fine, that will be. I love to have my students excel in the profession. That is my real teacher's ambition, actually. Fine. If you excel, I will not say, Are yeah, this guy, I only taught ABC of Fusion. Fine, like that, I will not sell. Fine, all this. So this facility is available only in what happens in Fusion. So against this 85, if there are multiple POs, it will not show you on the input details all the PO details over here. Now it is in the receiving section, fine. Let us now go and then deliver it. In EBS, when you want to deliver it, what happens? You have to go there, go to this navigation now, fine, close it, close it. And then here, what happens? You have to go to the navigation, go there. Here, what happens? You go there, go to the receiving, and then go to the receipt, receiving transaction. So this receiving transaction is known as a put away in uh, what happens? Your, uh, your fusion and go there. You'll now have to go put away and go there. So this place, uh, I've not gone there. I will not go again back to the receiving area now. Fine, go there. I'll not go back to the receiving area. Where is it here? Receive expected shipments here. What happens? You click on done now. Fine, not done. So the GRN is now created. Now we are going to put away this now. Fine, go there. So click on put away. Fine, click on the task carousel. And then you go to the put away receipts. Previously, what happens? We have gone to the receive expected shipments. Now I'm going to go to the put away receipts now. Click on the put away receipts. What is the GRN number? Anybody? Anybody? Is uh, uh, 1021. 1021. 1021 or 1011? Okay, you'll not see this. Fine, click on put away. And then go there. 1021, you're saying. I also forgot on that actually. We'll not see whether there is a GRM now. We'll not see. That's very correct. Who is this? Who gave the answer? Yeah, Hafiz. Uh, Aziz. Hafiz. 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 Yeah, very good. Hafiz. Beautiful. Fine. Hafiz, you are from which place? From uh, India or? Uh, yeah, I am from India. Chennai. 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 Okay, fine. Tamil. Ah. Okay, very good. Fine. Yeah. Hey, Hafiz, you told that you don't have any experience on EBS, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met me. Very good, very good, very good. Fine. See, this guy has got no experience on EBS, and then he is now from a BPO perspective, and then see, he is able to remember things. Excellent, yeah, your memory is good. You will excel in this field, man. Beautiful, good. Fine. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Nana. Fine, good. 
when you click on it and then click on put a put, put away i'm going to give a put away so it is known as a put away and then every 15 quantity that to put away and then i have to mention the subunity also here now fine i will now make a change from the expense subunity to asset subunity now fine go there they will now make a change to asset subunity and then here what happens i will now click on submit now fine click on submit by which it is now getting submitted now what happens it is now be available as an inventory stock fine put away transactions now completed fine go there it is now then and then you go to the next tab region of this and we make a requery on this now fine go there it is now showing you 15 on and is nil fine you will now say the 15 will now get shifted to on and now fine go there click on it now you can now see fine put all the tick mark over here you can click on search now and then you can now see that what happens the 15 is on and it is not in receiving now we will now go and then create a payables invoice now so let us go and then create a payables invoice for this uh, purchase order number 2022 fine you open up one more tab region and then go there e and then enter in now let us now go no no i have one question here tell me yeah so i am able to see the sub inventory and locator or auto populate yeah. is there any setup we have to do or yeah 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 we will come to that a bit later on fine we will come to that a bit later. well we will be doing it while we are doing those setups now <clears throat> so it is now coming fine go there and then now <coughs> What happens? They go there, and then in this place, what happens? They now click on this now, click on the home icon, and then we now go. What happens? They go to the payables now, and go to the payables now, and click on payables now. We go to the payables, and then go to the invoices, and then let me get an invoice for this now. Two zero two two is the PO number. So for which what happens? They now create a invoice number now. So click on the invoice icon and submit. Now. And click on the create icon. And click on create icon. So by identifying number is what two zero two two and then give a tab now. So here what happens is not showing you the two zero two two against all the business units. You have to choose your business unit. What is my business unit? It is K fifty. Remember, it is K fifty is the business unit. And we are working on this one existing one. So choose the K fifty on this now K fifty business unit. Click on okay. BU is equal to an operating unit now. A few business. BU is equal to an operating unit. Find go that is not done. So it is now populate everything. I will now give a supply invoice number. Find let's say. Uh, uh, one zero two three something. I'm giving it now. So let's say fifteen quantities is not fifteen because now taxation is not involved. Fine, go there. Put the amount over here now. Fine. Uh, now say <coughs> the orders. And then afterwards, what happens? You have to make a match now. We have to match and then obtain the line level distribution here. What happens? Line matching line. You click on this icon now. Fine. There is a go icon against the match. And click on go now. If you click on go, what happens? It will not show you in the bottom how much is eligible for a match now. Fine. Select the line. Select the line. And then here, how much is eligible for a match? Fifteen quantities. Is remember accruals are relieved quantity based and not as per the amount based basically. Fine, the orders. So quantity available for match is fifteen. So quantity relieval is accrual. Fine, quantity and not amount based. Represented in amount. It is represented in amount. Fine, the orders. But what happens is the quantity approved. Fine, click on apply and then click on OK. Now. Fine, the orders. So the fifteen quantities are relieved and then the line level distributions are obtained over here. Talk to the financials guys. They will notice a lot about it now. Fine, the line level distribution are obtained. Now let us go and then try to validate it. Now. Fine, go there. So it is now that I will now click on save now. Let me validate it. Fine, go to actions and then go to validate. <coughs> go to validate. Go to actions. Go to actions. Invoice actions and then I will now validate the invoice. It is now not validated. Fine, click on validate now. <coughs> click on validate it. So it is going to validate it now. <coughs> Fine, it needs revalidation. There is a line variance. Come on, how come a line variance has come now? I given only fifteen quantities, na? There is a line variance. It is not saying. Anybody? Okay, fine. I got it. I got it. So I made a mistake in the header amount. Now header amount is fifteen dollars. I said fifteen quantities. I given fifteen dollars. It is a two dollar price now, and I made a mistake now. So the line total is thirty, and then the you know header total is not thirty. So I now make a change to thirty now. Fine. This is a mistake I made. So I forgot that what I was I given a price of two assets. Fine. The orders. So because of which is not coming. Now I will now let me do the revalidation now. Fine. It has not raised the hold actually. Fine. The system hold has been raised now. Fine. The orders. System hold is now raised. So go there. I will now click on what I was invoice actions and then what I was I will now click on validate again. So by which what I was I want to have it is now fine. You have to have it as validated now. <clears throat> come on, come on, come on. I want it as validation. Validated. Vandichi. Everything is now green. Now. So this completes a simple demo of a what happens a P2P life cycle right from item creation, the requisition creation, the purchase order creation. Afterwards, what happens your receipts as what happens your uh, this thing your uh, what's called a standard and receipt routing, and then afterwards we are now create a invoice and then validate it also. Uh, Sadia, uh, you are given what is it? Uh, some message you are given one zero two one. Oh, she is giving the what's called. A, 
the number basically fine the gr number good 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 fine you can open up your mic and then speak fine no need to have give a chat and all because somebody may not be visible in the chat fine anybody can just open up your mic and then speak fine when you ask a question somebody may even answer others no fine i may not be knowing it fine i am not an expert on this no so whatever i know i will be doing it based upon my implementation experience and good fine no others so any queries on the this day session no fine tomorrow we are going to begin right from scratch and then develop our uh, what happens the structure actually the enterprise structure will be developed and then it will be set up and then afterwards we will now perform the transactions actually do try to attend each and every day session so that happens you can interact so if you only listen to the recordings in the night or the day next day what happens you will not miss interactions that is the biggest thing fine when you interact you can ask all the questions whatever you want those who are not paid please make a payment and then what happens i'll be sending you the instance credentials uh, and then your course documentation and then every day record after the third day as well as what happens i will not give you a support also when you are in the implementation phase right? it's a very low cost uh, training program it is not a very very costly one so i'm asking all the people who are not done the payment to make the payment fast uh, sir one question this is anirban uh, actually uh, in one of the transactions from requisition to payment can you enable the dff at the requisition level of course naturally we will be doing it now. and and you know because i was trying it with the enabling the sandbox and you know publishing it and then the dff got enabled uh -huh. but then, then there is a profile option which pulls the dff value to the purchasing mm -hmm. so in the requisition what was happening is it is i uh, giving a when i'm submitting the requisition uh -huh. it is giving an error that you know the mandatory fields are not uh, given okay so if you so, uh, what again i can even uh, check your instance uh, uh, can you come again after some time whenever you whenever time permits or whatever in the same zoom we can come and then you can now examine your system actually <clears throat> okay okay right. now it's almost 10 o'clock now right? <clears throat> now you'll be going for sleep now so tomorrow mm -hmm. morning whatever you can now uh, tell me a time and then we will now come again on same zoom and then whatever you'll now examine your system okay sir sure, sure. thank you any other questions for you <clears throat> Okay, fine. If there is no other question, we'll not call today, and then we'll not again meet at nine. Uh, just one question, uh, Nana, before before we you know say yeah. goodbye. Yeah. Uh, while, while you were doing this, I found that uh, you know you went to the inventory item uh, in the item master, yeah. and uh, you made changes there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I've seen is, uh, you know, that's that's the conflict thing and that you really don't you're not allowed to do that isn't it on most sites of on e business suite no you can do it you can very well change it why not yeah i mean you can because well once once you have assign see once you, you assign you can make a change yeah uh, that is what is called master controlled attributes and org controlled attributes if it is a master controlled attribute it will not allow you to change well like let me change, let me share and see no i will not show it you in the e business now fine go there so uh, here what happens you go there you go to the items now Fine, go there. Go to the items, and then go to the master items, and then let me create an item. Fine, go there. I will now put a create an item. Fine. Let me uh, let me put now. Fine, all of this. You know, n one zero one underscore item one. Now. Fine, item one. And then I will give a description. Fine, go there. Apply a template of purchase template. I am applying it now. Fine, go there. And then let me save it now. And then let me assign it to the org. Now. Fine. So let me go and then assign it to the org. So after assignment, fine, go there. Go to the tools, and then go to the organization assignment. Fine, go there. Go to the organization assignment. I am now going to assign it to the org now. Fine, go there. Commit. Fine, no sign. Then go there. Let me query this item on the org items. Fine, n one zero one. I am going to query it now. Fine, n one zero one. I am going to give it a tab. And then let me query it now. Fine, click on it. So let me query. Click on fine. And then here, if you go there, you go to the inventory tab region. <clears throat> if you query it afterwards, what happens? You go and then go to the inventory tab region. There, what happens? The first three attributes are basically master controlled, and then it will not allow you to even touch it. Fine, you go to the inventory. Here, you cannot change it. Inventory stockable, transactable, because you can only change it to the master. So, if an attribute is MC is master control attributes, we can change only in the master org and not on the child org. And then OCS must be changed only here now. Fine. If you go there, go to this place. You go to the master items and let me query it now. Fine. Go there. So let me query it. Fine. N one zero one percentage and then let me query it now. And then here, if you go there, if you go to the inventory, you can now see which attributes are OCS and MCS. If you say org level, it will not show you which are all controlled at org level. These are the ones. These five attributes are MCS master control attributes. They must be changed only at the master level. And then, if you go to the master, you can now see the attributes which are controlled at the master level are on the remaining are all grayed out. The yeah, same yeah. concept is yeah, made yeah, in yeah. fusion. Yeah, I understand that. What I was saying is, in fusion, I was trying to figure out the difference between uh, this uh, even the suite and fusion. In fusion, do you get? Do you, did you get? Uh, um, more, is fusion more flexible in this in this area? No, I mean, in the same you, way. It is exactly the same way like eBiz only. 
Fine. It will be contacted in the inventory training about how to set up all those things. Now, fine. Inventory training will not teach you about how to do the uh, what happens, uh, the make the change of the control levels from a master to org. Everything is all safe in Fusion also. There is no change at all. Right. Okay. We'll know how to get it during uh, the actual training. Okay, fine. Yeah. Remember these questions whenever you are asking for now. Fine. You have already one question on the receipt routing, which is now common for all the lines as far as EBS is concerned. It looks like it is now separate for every line. And then this is another thing. So when you come into the inventory area, what happens? You reserve your question, and then what happens? You keep a note, write a note on this now. Fine, go there. <clears throat> Good questions. Good. Fine. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else has got any questions? Good. Then now we'll now call it a day, and then what happens? We'll now again meet at 9 p.m. India tomorrow, which is 3:30 p.m. GMT. Fine. Bye. Those who are not paid, please make a payment as soon as possible. Fine. Now. <clears throat> Thank.